What's going on everybody? I'm Average Joe and welcome to another Average video. In today's Average video we're going to be doing a little update on the EPQ by Canadian Solar and then I think I was going to show you how well it handles a 2200 square foot home. That's basically one 7.6 kilowatt inverter right up here and five batteries below which is a total of 16.6 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. And that's running everything in your entire house, including your air conditioning, your stove, and your dryer. All right, before we get started, I was just gonna give you a quick little explanation of what this system is, just in case you're not aware. All right, so this is the EPQ by Canadian Solar. It is a residential energy storage system that is UL certified. And that basically means that you can connect it up to the grid and interact with the grid and everything is legal. All right, so right over here on the left, this is gonna be your smart gateway. This is kind of like the brains of everything. Everything attaches to this and this decides where the energy goes, okay? There's a few other things that can be connected to here. So you can do EV charging directly to this and you can also connect up a, another generator just in case you need generators. And then right over here is gonna be your hybrid inverter and all of your batteries, okay? Each hybrid inverter is 7.6 thousand watts, and then you have all of your stackable batteries below that. I actually have five batteries here for 16.6 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. However, you can connect up to six batteries per inverter, okay? So you can have up to, I think it's like 19.9 or 20 kilowatt hours per stack, and you can parallel in up to six stacks. All of the stacks of batteries and inverters are again, are gonna come back to the smart gateway. One more thing you do also get inside the hybrid inverter right here underneath this panel is you get four separate MPPT solar charge controllers. So you can have four separate solar arrays, all right? I actually have three connected right now. I've got one on my roof and I've got two ground mounts over here. The one on my roof is a little over 4,000 watts. Ground mount one is like 1,200 watts and ground mount two is 2,000 watts. So I do have room for one more array that I could connect up here. And there's actually one other thing I forgot to mention inside the smart gateway right over here is you can do AC coupled solar system. So if you already have an AC coupled solar system on your roof, you don't have to get anything special or do anything crazy for that. You can wire that directly into the smart gateway right here. So if you already have an existing solar system, you can continue using that right up here. There's two ways that you can connect all of this up to your house or your property that you're trying to power. First one is gonna be a whole home backup and the second is a partial home backup. For the whole home backup, basically you're gonna come from the grid and you're gonna go into the smart gateway right here. And then from the gateway, you're gonna go back to your main electrical panel that's gonna power your entire property or home. And if you're doing a partial home backup, which is what I did, basically you're gonna come from the grid into your main electrical panel just as it normally would. And then from your main electrical panel, you're gonna wire over to the smart gateway. And then from the smart gateway, gateway, you're going to wire over to a sub panel or a critical loads panel. That's basically how I am using it here. So just a quick little example, if the grid goes out in a whole home backup, you're going to still be able to power the entire house. And that's going to be including your stove, air conditioning and dryer, or all of your major loads. If you're doing a partial home backup, like I'm doing, if the grid ever goes down, the only thing that I'm going to be able to continue powering is going to be my critical load panel or my sub panel. And that's going to be something for you to decide, you know, if you decide to go with something like this. All right, next we're going to go over the six months update that I've had this installed. And I do have to keep it honest here real quick is yes, I've had it installed for six months. Two of those months has been in the dead of winter time and it has been so cloudy here, at least in December, January, and a little bit of February. I didn't really get to use this to its fullest extent. And, and for me, that means basically discharge it and recharge it every single day. I don't do any grid interactive stuff, but of the six months, two of those months technically didn't count because I just left it in battery backup mode only because we didn't get very much sun at all. And if we did get sun, I would try to use the batteries the day and night before, you know, so I could recharge it by the sun the next day. I don't know, I just didn't get to use it as I wanted to use it in the self consumption mode. Honestly, I don't have anything crazy or major to report because 
once you have it set up and you have your solar installed or wired in, you just kind of forget about it. You just randomly check in on the app. Other than that, it's been working fan freaking tastic. We've had two little tiny grid outages. They didn't last very long, but whenever the grid did go out, we still had power. The only reason I knew that the grid went out is because I was just checking in on the app, which it does come with an app, by the way. It said we were in backup mode because the grid was gone. And then the next time I looked at it, you know, the grid was there. It's just really, really cool that you can just continue powering everything in your house you know, without missing a beat. Other than that, it's been working fan freaking tastic. They have done a few updates to the app. And I remember at the very, very beginning, whenever I had this, whenever you click to see how much solar you're producing, it just gave you a total of how much you're producing. Now it'll tell you if you're producing your AC coupled system, and it'll also tell you each PV array that you have. For example, right now my PV Array 1 is doing 0.93, so 1 kilowatt. PV2 is doing 1.33, and PV3 on the roof is doing 2.78. So that is a nice update. The only thing I wish I guess it did have on here was the total, so you don't have to try to add up every single uh, array that you have. I guess the only other way that you can do that is if you go to your, your data screen right here, and then you click on it and just scroll all the way to the right. If you look right there, it says we're doing 4.6 kilowatt. I wish they would put it right up here on the home screen, right up here on the top, your total kilowatt. That would be nice, nice to see. Again, you can see all of your backed up loads. That's going to be my sub panel right there, which is sitting right over here. That's basically my entire house. If I forgot to mention it in the beginning time, since this is a hybrid inverter, if you're not familiar with hybrid inverters and you have this in a partial home backup, which I do, this will actually back feed your main electrical panel. The fan just turned off. Uh, basically, there are some CT clamps that you install in your main electrical panel. And if you're doing a partial home backup and you don't want to feed back to the grid like I do, uh, it'll basically back feed your main electrical panel so you're powering your entire house but it won't go past those CT clamps, and which is really, really awesome for people like me that just want to basically lower your utility bill or just get rid of it altogether without backfeeding the grid. That's what I want to do. All right, that's basically my six month update. So far, everything has been working fan freaking fantastic, and I don't have any problems yet. All right, next part of the video, I was going to go around and show you everything that I have powered in my house, which I typically do in videos like this, but I don't think I really, really need to, because you can see right now I'm drawing 1.16 kilowatt from the batteries and the solar right now. It's, it's powering my entire house. But what I would like to do is show you that it can power your stove, air conditioning, and dryer. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna try the dryer. All right, there's actually one other gripe that I forgot to mention with the app is it doesn't refresh very quickly. I think it takes at least a minute for everything to show up on the app. So once I start the dryer, I'll have to wait a minute so I can show you on the app. All right, so anyway, we're gonna put this on a timed dry for 15 minutes, we'll say, and that'll be on its highest setting or the highest heat setting. All right, here we go. All right, that shouldn't have been any sort of flicker at all. And I'll just come over here and we'll wait for it to refresh. Okay, there you go. That took maybe one minute. And now we're drawing 5.8 kilowatt for the non backed up load. That's basically my main electrical panel. And we're also powering the backed up loads, which is going to be my critical loads panel or my sub panel. All right. So there you go. If you want to see the solar coming in again, there it is right there. And I'm going to turn this camera around real quick and I'm gonna go stand by the EP cube and you can hear the fans with a six, almost 7,000 watt load on the system. All right, we're gonna do a sound check and I'm about an arm's length away. I would say that was an average of 55 decibels, but also keep in mind my dryer's like 10 feet over there. 
This is really, really quiet. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start my four ton air conditioning while the dryer is running. And I will mention real quick is I do have a soft start on my air conditioning since I have off-grid systems just like that. A soft start, basically all it does is it lowers the startup current so you can start up your air conditioning whenever you're running off of solar and batteries or gas or diesel generators. So it should start this no problem, but let's find out. All right, we're gonna switch over to cool. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lower that. Let's see if I can refresh it. All right, now we're showing 9.9 .9 on the non-backed up loads. That's basically my main electrical panel. And you can also see we started pulling 3000 watts from the grid. That's what a hybrid inverter does, is if you go over the 7.6 kilowatt capabilities of this inverter, it will pull from the grid as necessary. Once you get past that initial surge, uh, it's going to switch back to the off-grid mode, which is what it did right now. Now we're running directly from the solar and batteries. So now we're only drawing 2.48 kilowatt. That's on my main electrical panel. That's the dryer and the air conditioning. It's hard to say if the heating element's on at the moment, but you get the idea. And we're also drawing 1.3 from my critical loads panel, all right? So that's the air conditioning and the dryer, okay? So I'm going to turn off the air conditioning and we're gonna go upstairs and try the stove. Basically, it's gonna be the exact same thing. However, we'll just turn the entire thing on and we'll pull 12,000 watts and you can see exactly what's happening. All right, next thing we're gonna do is power the stove and we're just going to turn on every single burner and the two ovens down below. This will be just another example of how you can max out the entire hybrid inverter and then if you need more it'll pull from the grid. Okay so I'm not going to turn on actually that little warming zone right there just so I don't burn my phone. <laughs> okay so anyway here we go we're going to turn on all burners. We'll just do the burners first and we'll just see where it goes. Now we're pulling 9,000 watts and we're pulling 2.8 from the grid, all right? And plus we're doing my sub panel, which is the rest of my house. Uh, solar, it is kind of cloudy out right now, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna turn on the lower oven. If I figure out how to do that, we'll go 350 and then we'll also turn on the lower oven down here. All right, 11.6 from the battery and solar, and we're pulling 5.4 from the grid, all right? So that's just another example of how you can completely max out the entire hybrid inverter, and then if you need more, it'll pull from the grid. Okay, so let me turn this off, and there we go. Now we're back down to zero, and only pulling about 890 watts. All right, next is just a quick little example showing that you can run the majority of your home, including some of your big appliances, off of the one single inverter, and that is 7.6 thousand watts, okay? So keep in mind, I am running the rest of my house. The average load right now is um, 1,300 watts, okay? So everything in my house right now is running 1,300 watts, and I did turn on the air conditioning, and that is 2.2 thousand watts right now. So we're drawing, you know, 3.5 kilowatt, okay? So we're gonna turn on the stove, and we're gonna keep it under the 7.6 thousand watts. All right, so the air conditioning is on and that's drawing 2.2 kilowatt and my regular house is drawing 1.23 kilowatt. So we're under the 7.6 kilowatt. So right now I'm going to turn on one of the big burners on high and we'll see what that goes to. All right, so now the big appliances are drawing 5.3 kilowatt and my house is drawing 1.3. So that is almost seven kilowatt. All right, so that is doing this no problem. I don't think we could add another burner, so that's okay. You can power one burner in your air conditioning and your entire house at the same time, and you still have a little bit to spare. Okay, we're gonna turn that off, and I'm gonna turn on the convection oven down below, and we'll see what that goes to. So that's drawing a little bit less. 
So now in total, we're drawing five plus 1.3. So 6.4 kilowatt. All right, so now we're running the air conditioning, the lower oven and the entire house. Okay, so we still have another thousand watts that we could mess with. So we could run the dishwasher, we could run the toaster, the microwave, um, we could make a pot of coffee, you know, we could still run the TV and all that kind of stuff. And we'll be under that 7.6 thousand watts that the one single inverter can supply. All right, well, there you go. I just want to do a quick little update video on the EP cube. I wanted to show you that you could run a 2200 square foot home, including some of the bigger appliances, all from one single inverter in order to either lower your bill or possibly just get rid of it all together. There's actually one other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video whenever I was doing my little update section was with the five batteries right here, which is 16.6 .6 kilowatt hours worth of battery, I am able to make it all through the night and into the next day and start recharging from solar if there's sun out and be continually off grid. The only time I ever go back on grid or pull from the grid is if we're using all the major appliances at the same time or if the air conditioning starts running a lot at night, I'll drain the batteries pretty quick. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. I'm gonna start wrapping up the video because I'm sure it's gone on long enough. So if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns on the EP Cube, definitely let me know in the comment section. I think in one of the next videos, we're either going to do the grid down situation and see how long I can go off grid, or I'm going to hook up a generator so we can see how that works. If anybody has any suggestions on what they would like to see from the EP Cube, definitely let me know. Don't forget to like like that smash button on your way out and I will see you on the next um, uh, um, yeah okay well I gotta wait for the air conditioning to turn back on <laughs> all right Come on air conditioning hey buddy how's the nap doing good hmm you doing good it's getting a little recharge Okay, I'll leave you alone.